to enter into the kingdom of God is different to entering into or gaining or winning or earning citizenship in another country where you might be rewarded for citizenship. But Jesus says to enter into the kingdom of God, it could only be entered by those who humble themselves. You have to humble yourself, not be humbled, humble yourself to enter into the kingdom of God. The next thing, Matthew chapter 21 and verse 31. This is what Jesus said. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. So he's just told them a story. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. What? This would have rocked the world of these Pharisees and scribes and religious people who were challenging Jesus about, well, if you're, the, if you're bringing in the kingdom of God, that your first sermon was it's just, just about to begin, where is it? Why haven't you done it? You've been here three and a half years. What have you done to bring in this kingdom of God that you claimed you were bringing in? And then Jesus says this outrageous statement. Tax collectors, they were the most... They were the most insidious people because they were traitors, essentially, to a Jewish mind, and prostitutes. And the word prostitute was a synonym that used, more often than not, to describe a prostitute, was the word sinner. They were just called sinners, tax collectors and sinners. These were the two lowest categories of people. And Jesus has just said, they will enter into the kingdom of God before you will why why because it's not about being religious it's not about having a religion and and there are some people who the word is they are inclusivists that is they believe that God doesn't care what religion you hold as long as you hold a religion and so these people who are called inclusivists believe that God will include all religions into the kingdom of God. That's clearly not what Jesus taught. And in this instance, Jesus is saying to very religious people, you're not going to get in. With that attitude, you're not going to get in. And that sort of challenges, and it should challenge, those people who hold to inclusivism, that you can be a Hindu, a Buddhist, a Muslim, or whatever, and you'll be okay. Because Jesus is now teaching, it's not a matter of being religious. It's a matter of being repentant. It's not a matter of being religious. It's a matter of being repentant. And repentant simply means this. You were going in one direction. Now, you're going in a different direction. So to repent means an about face. And all of us are born with an inclination to go the way we want to go. No one's going to tell me what to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. And Jesus is saying, you've got to humble your heart like a little child. And you've got to be repentant. And when we see Jesus interacting with tax collectors and sinners, prostitutes, we see that they flocked to him. Because when they came to Jesus, he didn't condemn them. He didn't call them dirty. He didn't accuse them of being vile or anything like that. In fact, he chose, arguably he chose a woman who had you know, a questionable past to be a part of his travelling troop, Mary Magdalene. He also chose Matthew, a tax collector, not because they were religious, but because they humbled their heart asked for forgiveness which is a part of repentance and they turned to him and that's what Jesus said is necessary to enter into his kingdom and it's my hope that in what I share today you do two things one if you're already in the kingdom your heart attitude toward tax collectors and sinners in other words those people who you think oh they are enemies of Christianity I hope your attitude changes so that we adopt an attitude like Christ that says, you know what, these people who 
attack Christianity. They're not our enemies. They're objects of God's love. And he wants us to be the means by which they experience God's love. And then secondly, if you feel like you're a million miles away from God, if you feel like there's no hope, if you feel that life has no meaning and your soul is empty, why am I even alive? What is all this about? The reason is you were created to come into the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is very simple in this sense. It's where God is king of your life. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button. For more information about our church, head over to lagana.org.